75 degrees here as we have the first snap. No kickoff. First snap between Spring Garden and Central Coosa. And they'll scrimmage from the 35 yard line. First handoff to the fullback, Quentin Downey. As Spring Garden tests the right side of the uh, defensive front of Central Coosa for a gain of about three. One of the things Jason Howard has done this year, the reclassification, also doing schedules, his non region games, this is something. It's never happened for Spring Garden before. His three non-region games, he's going to play Beulah, a 3A. He's going to be Pleasant Valley, who is a 3A school. And then he's got uh, perennial 1A power Donahoe. So he's going to play two 3A schools in non-region. And he's playing a 3A school here in this jamboree. Second down and seven for the Panthers. Back to the ground game once again. They try the tailback. Dakota Lambert, nothing doing at all. He was hit right after he received the handoff and driven backwards. They'll give him about a half yard gain. And the tackle made by number 22 and number 52. That is Hill and Davis. Lambert trying to spin away two different times, but that central defense just too big and strong. They have got some massive guys on that front line. Of course, you remember Central Acusa was a uh, team, this is the high school that produced Justin Tuck, who played at Notre Dame, played many, many, many years in the NFL. They've had some great talent that has come through at Central Coos over the years. And the handoff to the fullback, Quentin Downey. So it's fullback, tailback, fullback, and basically three yards and a cloud of dust on all three downs. So it'll be third, fourth down and one at the 44-yard line for Spring Garden. And again, as same rules as we've had the last couple of days. Uh, Spring Garden could go for it here or they could punt and uh, no live punting, so they would just mark the ball 35 yards downfield. But again, on fourth and one, John here around midfield, Spring Garden looks as though they're going to go for it. And, and Spring Garden, you nailed it, Mickey. You said three yards in a cloud of dust, and that is exactly <laughs> what they do. They pride themselves on three yards in a cloud of dust offense. Put you in a makeable fourth and one. And they get it. That is Quentin Downey, and he got about three yards. So uh, first down for the Panthers out at the 48. Yeah, there was some confusion that time along the defensive front for Central Coosa. Ethan Whaley coming in at the last moment at the tackle position, moving another player around. Some of that confusion leading to Spring Garden able to convert that first down. Looking at a 12-minute quarter, then uh, they'll take a two-minute break and play a five-minute quarter. And as John mentioned, typically it's varsity, then JV. And of course, with Central Cusa, they probably, their numbers are a bit smaller than Spring Garden. So most of their same players will probably compete in both quarters. Here, the uh, quarterback, Ben Ivey, tried to keep it himself, his first carry. And uh, he nets a negative one yard on the carries. He loses a yard back to the 47. Ivy, not the biggest quarterback. They don't depend on his arm to win football games. He's, I guess, a typical game manager type. They can throw the football. They, they, they pull a lot of surprises on folks, and they've had some big plays in the offensive side. But he's the kind of guy that's real steady, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, runs the offense, has good knowledge of the offense, uh, a lot of experience, as they'll actually go shotgun here on this play in four wide. So Spring Garden full of surprises. First pass attempt of the game, and it is a good one. Hit in stride at about the 20-yard line, Dakota Lambert, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Boy, John, that was a, a beautiful pass from quarterback Ben Ivey, and his line gave him just enough time. Well, they load him to sleep. They, they line up running three yards in a cloud of dust, and then all of a sudden they come out after the first down and catch him. Not a typical passing situation. Come out with a four wide and put Ivy in the shotgun. We mentioned the speed of Dakota Lambert. Lambert on just a straight fly pattern runs by the central defense and wide open and then takes it to the house for the touchdown for Spring Garden. Excellent play calling by the Spring Garden coaches. Several running plays in a row. And then they hit him with a long touchdown pass. And I guess I should correct myself. It's not really three yards in a cloud of dust here. It would be three <laughs> yards in a cloud of black beads. That's exactly right. Rubber beads. And John, I know you know this 
young lady who just kicked the uh, extra point. Caitlin Rogers has been the place kicker for a couple of years for Spring Garden. Loves football. Coach Howard said, hey, she just, from the seventh grade, she started hanging around being a manager, just wanted to be on the football team. Pretty good place kicker. And last year, Mickey, if you'll remember on Pigskin Roundup, Spring Garden was playing at Coosa Christian. They put her in at tailback late in the game. It was a blowout win for Spring Garden. And she actually scored a touchdown. And after doing some consultation with Ron Ingram down at the Alabama High School Athletic Association, we think that as far as AHSAA teams go, that she's the first girl in state history in the Athletic Association to score a touchdown in a varsity game. Hmm. Amazing accomplishment for that young lady. And a pretty good drive for Spring Garden, especially as dominant as Central Coosa was in their first game for Spring Garden to get the ball to start the game and march all the way down the field, 65 yards in five plays, and take a 7-0 lead, a drive that took less than four minutes to execute. So here is Central Coosa again. They were very prolific on offense in their first matchup against Southeastern. Let's see how, see how they fare against the Spring Garden D. And a good start for the Spring Garden defense. That time is number 22, T.J. Hill, took the direct number snap. Kind of a wildcat Hill looking play and got nothing. So it'll be second down at 10. Hill very impressive in the first game. Also, Drake Catchings, an upcoming sophomore, still in the ninth grade for Central Coosa. I was very impressed with him in that first game against Southeastern. And another keeper for Hill. And a big hole into the Spring Garden secondary, and they'll finally track him down at about the 11-yard line. Ben Ivey had the angle, and he was able to save a touchdown. That's something we saw in the first game, and we see it right there again, beautifully executed by Central Cusa. As they just run that quarterback read option, he just comes down the line in a huge hole there. Great block up front and able to pick up huge yard is J.T. Hill of Central Coosey. You see that speed there. There's something that you can't coach in Spring Garden. Is definitely a big disadvantage speed-wise versus the Cougars. Now we see our first look in this game of Tyus Evans. Had a very good first game. He spins his way down inside the five. They'll give him... About five yards on the carry. It'll be second down and goal from there. Big Ethan Whaley over here. Whaley, number 74, huge, massive guy over here, and he's been opening up some holes. He looks like he's close to 280, 290 pounds over here on this right side. The last two times when they run that quarterback read, he has dominated that spring guard in front. Second and goal. Here is Evans, and he's able to shed the attempted tackle of Joseph Rogers and spins his way into the end zone. And what an answer for Central Cusa is in about a minute off the clock. They're right back down the field into the end zone with a chance to tie or take the lead. And you see in the background there again, 74 for the third time in a row, they run right behind him and he walled off about two or three Spring Garden defenders. He is dealing misery to that Spring Garden front line right now. So they go for two. Here is Hill, cuts it up inside, and he's in. So two-point conversion is successful at Central Acusa with, a, with an answer offensively. Back down the field, they take an 8-7 to seven lead with 7 minutes and 20 seconds left in our first quarter. Central Acusa doing the, going the exact same spot again, and this time it was 25, Jaquan Wilson. Again, sealing off the Spring Garden linebacker in just a massive hole. And right now, that central front line is making it real easy for these uh, Cougar running backs and quarterbacks right now having their way about a four-play drive that time for Central Acusa. And they seem to be answering our question about whether they would be winded. They look pretty pretty sharp here to start this game. There's a look at the uh, Tony Sarah Ford scoring drive. Four plays, 65 yards, only a minute, 21 seconds. For central Acusa to take their first lead of this game against Spring Garden 8-7. So now the Panthers, who were very efficient on their first possession. Some big play offenses so far here. We've seen a big pass play from Spring Garden, a huge run play from Central of Coosa. It has not been boring here in this first quarter of play between the Panthers and the Cougars. Four receivers 
in this formation on first down for the Panthers. Let's see if they go to the air. They do on first down. Ivy's pass is away and right on the money to Dakota Lambert. John, I've been very impressed. I know it's early. <laughs> We've only seen a, a couple of series so far, but this quarterback, Ben Ivy, he has got a very accurate arm. Ben Ivy doing a great job, patient in the backfield, picking out the receiver. And we, we talk about Dakota Lambert a lot of time as far as a running back. He's been most effective as a receiver today. Two big catches already, one for a touchdown, and then that one picking up a big first down in Spring Garden just like that already in one play back in Central Territory. Same formation, three receivers split to the short side of the field. Ivy comes back left, had a receiver open, undershot him there. I probably jinxed him talking about how good his arm looked, but Joseph Rogers had a step on the defensive back of Central Coosa that time, but the pass was about five yards behind him. Joe Rogers opened that time just a little bit short on the pass, but again, the Spring Garden receivers open. Joe Rogers, the brother of uh, one of the great basketball players in this state and in girls basketball, Takia Rogers off the Spring Garden's state championship girls basketball team. That's her little brother there, Joe. So Spring Garden with a lot of athletes. We mentioned the skill positions would be loaded, and we've seen that already here in the early going. Staying with this three receiver formation to the short side. Ivy will run it back to the wide side. Good execution. Ivy turns the corner. He's inside the 20, and he will be knocked out of bounds by Hill at about the 14-yard line. So, again, excellent play calling here, John. They overload the short side with receivers, and two plays in a row, they come back to the wide side. Rodgers out there getting a block, getting in the way, setting it up, springing him for some extra yards. And Ivy giving Spring Garden opponents in Class 1A Region 7 a lot to think about with Ivy not only running the football, but also throwing the football and Spring Garden coming out with four wide receivers. And look at them now. Now they can go back in. This is almost like a wing T yeah. formation. <laughs> More of a traditional high school running formation. They go back to the big fullback this time, Quentin Downey. And he uh, pushes the pile forward to about the 10 yard line for a game of four. So Spring Garden, John going with a uh, little bit of everything out of the playbook here early on. You know you've got an experienced team when in the spring you can throw all these different formations out. You know you've got an experienced quarterback, you've got experienced guys uh, at the skill positions and coaching staff, and everybody's on the same page. When you can come after 10 days of practice and come out and go to all these different kind of formations, and here's another formation that we really haven't seen yet going actually now the same formation to the other side. And in the fullback gets the call again, breaking tackles and breaking the plane of the goal line for the touchdown. That's Quentin Downey. He was hit right away, but refused to go down. And now the Spring Garden offense with the quick answer. Downey wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, but he just dragged two central defenders for about the last four yards into the end zone. And they will go for the extra point once again, Caitlin Rogers. Luke Ivey. Boy, both of these offensive, Mickey, have looked in mid-season form. Central very impressive, Spring Garden very impressive in these opening drives. And here's the extra point. Is up and good for Caitlin Rogers. So she's two for two. And the Spring Garden lead is six now, 14 to eight. John, another look at the touchdown. There's the initial hit, then another hit by Hill. But I tell you, Downey got some leg drive on that play. Downey's initial hit was at the five yard line, had another hit at the four yard line and dragged both players the distance into the end zone. And the Tony Sarah Ford scoring drive looked a lot like <laughs> uh, Central Coosa scoring drive a moment ago. Just four plays, 65 yards, 120 of time off the clock, a different of one second. I believe the same number of plays. Exactly, and the same number of yards. Four so, plays, 65 yards. Is at the 35 yard line. Now Central Coosa's offense takes the field. Six minutes exactly to play in what has been an entertaining first quarter so far between these two teams. And here is Trey Peoples. And Peoples is a very good running back, but John, like any running back, he's got to have room to get started. And Spring Garden smothered that play right at the line of scrimmage. The first Panther there was big number 75, Christian Kreider. First time we've really seen any penetration by Spring Garden. 
Central. They will be lucky to get this play off before getting 12 players on the field, but they finally get that last one off. And here is Evans on the keeper. And Evans, good hard running. He broke a couple of tackles at the 38-yard line and took it up to the 37 for a gain of seven. Just snapping it straight back to the quarterback, and that's been a play that's given Spring Garden a lot of problems. Some missed tackles there, dragging some players with him. An elusive young man, number 15. So a possession play for the Cougars, third down and three. Evans keeps it right up the middle between the tackles. And he's got enough for the first down as he is stopped at about the 49-yard line. So that'll move the chains for the Cougars. And that Cougar offensive line, again, sealing off the middle of the Spring Garden defense. They maybe took one play off the first play of this possession, Mickey, where they didn't do a very good job blocking. But other than that, on virtually every other play that they've had the football, they have just dominated the Spring Garden defensive front. Good look there at number 15, Tyus Evans. And he pitches to McKinney, and McKinney in big trouble, way back behind the line of scrimmage. A host of Spring Garden defenders coming through. Draven Bowman shot through there to disrupt the play, and he had a lot of help, John, as this play loses about, what, ten, almost 10 yards. Absolutely. Bowman just came unblocked and totally disrupted the play. They were going to run that little pop pass on an end around. Had some good success with that against Southeastern earlier, but not this time. Spring Garden ready for it. Second down and 20. Evans breaks a tackle, turns the corner, and Evans will be taken off his feet at about the 36-yard line. And a touchdown saving tackle that number time for Spring Garden. The carry made by An eight. arm tackle is not going to get it done against this young man. And especially when you have the breakaway speed he has. Tyler Sudbury missing the tackle in the backfield. Didn't wrap him up. And then he got loose and takes it all the way down to the Spring Garden 35. And here comes Central again. Nice job by Elijah Petty hustling over to save a touchdown that time. So a huge gain on second and 20. Here is Evans. And he cuts back and is upended at about the 24-yard line. So I tell you, John, it really doesn't matter how big the yardage deficit is. This young man right here can pick him up in a hurry. And they go back to their bread and butter, just a direct snap to, to 15. And then he takes it and runs. And that big offensive line dominating and another huge game of about another dozen yards. Hill back in there, quarterback. And he will keep it. Good job of being patient and following his blocks and getting what he can. There's about five maroon jerseys surrounding him at the 20-yard line to take him down after, for a gain of just three. Luke Welch was the first one there, and he was hanging on for all he was worth. <laughs> he was begging for some help to get there. Finally got two or three other jerseys there. And these, get, these running backs and quarterbacks from Central Lacusa, tough to bring down. Yeah, they're Slippery just, guys. Just interchangeable. Hill, Evans, they just go back and forth at the quarterback position. This is Hill, second carry in a row. Only about three yards, so a nice job by the Spring Garden defense. They're gang tackling now, and that's what you've got to do with these guys because if you don't get to them quick and they get, get, their, get in that fourth, fifth gear, you're in big trouble. So a third down and four. Football at about the 17 yard line. Evans takes the snap. Comes around the corner. He is going to be spun down at the nine yard line for a first down, but there is a flag back at the 18 yard line. I think this is coming back. I think you heard the entire Spring Garden coaching staff and their fans yelling for holding, and they'll get that holding call with that flag in the backfield. Speaking of fans, of course, southeastern central Coosa coming from outside the area, but Spring Garden, just about 20 miles up the road here, they have a huge crowd. Yes, this may do. be the most of any team that we've seen here, except maybe Oxford. But uh, definitely, if you're looking for the biggest crowds we had over the three days, Spring Garden and Oxford have brought the biggest crowds. It's a big contingent here from SG, and I think that that just uh, tells you about how the culture is kind of changing a little bit up at Spring Garden. Yeah, they. He grabbed him by the head, actually, that time and pulled him backwards. <laughs> and like a lot of holding calls you see, really not necessary. But hey, when you're out there in the heat of the moment, you're just trying to 
trying to make a play. So third down and long now. They spot it back at the 28, so it's third down and 15. They need to take it down to the right about the 13-yard line for first down. Evans looking over to his coaches. Takes the snap. Tries to get around the corner and cannot do so. That was an outstanding play from the backside by Spring Gardens number 54, who we don't have a name. We apologize. John, do you have a 54 on your Co roster? Corey Williams. Okay. He was an honorable mention all region and an all Cherokee County player last year for Spring Garden. I think I've got a better roster than you do there. I cheated a little bit. You have more friends in Spring Garden than I do. <laughs> well, I, I actually emceed their athletic banquet last week, and I got an advanced copy. So I think it was a little bit better from Coach Howard. So a chance finally for one of these defenses to stop the other, the other offense. Fourth and 15. Evans looking to throw, drops the football. Now we'll just pick it up and run it. A flag flies behind the line of scrimmage. Evans is unable to pick up the first down. He'll be about four yards short. So uh, if the flag is against the offense, it will not matter. It'll be a change of possession. And it is a holding call against Central Cusa. So really, Cusa kind of shooting themselves in the foot, John, and stopping themselves with a couple of holding penalties. So Spring Garden will get it back with 122 to play in this quarter. There it is right there. Just kind of grabbed him around the waist as the ball was going to the ground. That's 55 for Central Coosa. Keonta Hines, an upcoming sophomore with the hold. But again, we're seeing Tyus Evans. Evans showing his speed once again. Spring Garden really just does not have a guy. Once he turns the corner, they're giving it their all. But they just don't have anybody that can match up with him speed-wise once he gets into the open field. So a big stop for the Panther defense. Now they take back over on offense. First down at the eight, just inside their own 18-yard line. Speaking of big crowds, we expect a big contingent from Munford. Munford has been in this event for the last two or three years, and they always been a big, big crowd. We see the Munford cheerleaders here. A lot of Munford fans coming in. And here's the give to the fullback. Nice run there by Quentin Downey. He was tackled low by Jay Hunt. Nice gain of about five yards on first down. Yeah, John, I've even seen some Gunnersville folks. They saw the Gunnersville athletic director come in just a moment ago. So, you know, bo both of those teams have a lot of fan support. I expect a really nice atmosphere, atmosphere here when they kick it off. Gunnersville, their team was here at about 4.30. They were here in the stadium about two hours before they were playing just to try to they were watching themselves up on the big screen here on our broadcast and having a good time. Second down and four. Lambert on the carry has the first down. Slip down. Or he would have had more. But it is a first down out at the 29-yard line. Again, clock is a factor under a minute to play. And, and uh, if they do like they've done in the past, they'll treat the next quarter. Well, actually, the last game, they just kind of did it as an add-on. So they didn't. I think it's a, like a five-minute add-on JV. We've had different rules for virtually every different game here. And they here. kept the score, so. It's kept the score, yes. We'd kind of like to see that here. This has been a good one so far. This is the culmination. We reference Friday and Saturday, if you're just joining us. This is the culmination of a three-day event. We had great games here on Friday, great games here all day on Saturday. Ivy keeps it on the quarterback keeper. He took a shot there by Central Coosa's Tony Davis. Gain of four. Spring Garden does have a timeout, but uh, I think they just let the clock run out. They're satisfied with a 14 to eight lead or lead. And we'll take a two minute uh, break between quarters and come back and we are scheduled for one more five minute quarter between these two teams before we move on to our third game. We'll take a break and continue with live coverage of the Gridiron Challenge from Jacksonville State University. Stay with us.
It's time you got a car as reliable as you are. And America's First has made that more possible than you might think. When it comes to great tasting barbecue, nobody does it better than Dad's Barbecue. Dad's Barbecue is slow, hickory cooked to perfection, and Dad's menu includes a wide selection of popular items such as our smoked chicken sandwich, ribs, salads, and the best chicken fingers in town. And Dad's does catering, so let Dad's take care of your next party, family reunion, church function, or any type of get-together. Family owned since 1985, Dad's Barbecue, with locations in Anniston and Rainbow City. TV 20. And welcome back to JSU Stadium. Mickey Shadricks and John Holder back with you for the second quarter of Spring Garden and Central of Coosa. And they are treating in this next five minute quarter like the second half of the game. The Central Coosa will take over possession of the ball at the 35 yard line, trailing 14 to 8. And I believe by agreement, I think this may be mostly JV guys or second and third team guys here in this five minutes. Hill in there at quarterback, and he is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Nice job again. This is the second time we've called this young man's name, number 54, Corey Williams. So second down and 11. This has been an enjoyable football game to watch. Pretty well played. A couple of penalties there by Central on that last drive, but pretty entertaining first quarter we had. Yeah, those two penalties really about the only difference in the game. It kept Central out of the end zone and big play here as T.J. Hill takes off for a huge gainer across the 50 down to the Spring Garden 42. Again, this example, John, if these guys get past the initial line of scrimmage, they're a threat to score on any play. Spring Garden's best Better get him at the line. Says, yes, get him early. And here is Evans back in there. That's exactly what we're talking about. Three guys converging on Number Evans that time. Once again, it was Williams helping out on the tackle for a gain of only a yard. And number 54. I believe we may have a spring garden schedule, but we were talking about their schedule and how he's upgraded that playing Pleasant Valley, a 3A school for the first time in many years. Playing Beulah, who at, at times has been a 4A school, now a 3A school, and really beefing up that schedule to get playoff ready, I guess. And here is Hill. Oh, touchdown saving tackle that time by Spring Gardens number 30, Jonah Smith, but it's still a big game for Hill down to the 20 in Central Coosa in hurry up mode now. They've got that offense clicking now as they're trying to retake the lead here. Hill cuts it up inside and is met hard by a host of Panther defenders led by number 56. That is Dalton Gilly. And there's the Spring Garden schedule opening up with Beulah. That 19th day will be the Cherokee County Jamboree region games with Galesville, Woodville, Valleyhead, a non-region game down in Anniston against Donahoe, Coosa, Christian, JCA, Holy Spirit out of Tuscaloosa, Cedar Bluff, and then Pleasant Valley. And that Cedar Bluff game for the last couple of years, that has basically been your region title game. And that game at Cedar Bluff in week nine, again, will most likely Cedar Bluff Super 7 team representing the North last year. A lot of good players coming back for Jonathan McWhorter and his team. And again, that is likely to be another region championship. And it may very well be the two best 1A teams in North Alabama meeting in week nine up at Bruce Field at Cedar Bluff. Third and nine now. Hill takes it, trying to turn the corner. Gets a good block inside the 10, and he's into the end zone. So on third down and nine, we've seen Central a convert on several long down and distant long down and distances in this game and here's another and this one gives them a touchdown and they retake the with chance to retake the lead too many missed tackles and too much speed by central of Coosa. Hey, Central last year surprised some folks going five and five making the first round of the playoffs what we've seen here today I would think there's more of the same. This is not an easy out for a lot of teams in Class 3A because they've got a lot of speed, and this team's only going to get better as we move into the 2016 season. Evans 
in trouble behind the line. Can he outrun the D? Yes, and that's what we're talking about. That That's a perfect example of why Central Coosa is going to be a tough out because they're going to score points, and they score two here to retake the lead at 16-14 with 2.34 to play in our final quarter. There's the Tony Sarah Ford scoring drive, six plays, 65 yards, 2.26 off the clock, and uh, Central back in front now, so Spring Garden. John will have two minutes and 34 seconds to work with here. I think that's our fourth 65-yard drive. So these teams have been very efficient offensively. And I tell you, I, and you, you look at 3A football, Evans is going to be as far as a quarterback goes with his legs. I would say he's as, about as good as you're going to see in 3A football as far as a running ability from a quarterback. Not only is he, we mentioned the speed, but he's very elusive. How many times have we seen him break tackles and get out of situations and turn it into big plays? Spring Garden will come back out with a chance to mount a winning drive here if they can or at least get down in potential field goal range and only down by two. Coming up immediately following this game, we'll take a 10-minute break. Southeastern will come back on the field and they will play against Spring Garden. This will conclude Central Coosa's participation in the Gridiron Challenge when this game is finished. And tailback gets the call. That's Dakota Lambert. Sea of white jerseys. Wrap him up at the 37. Our correction, that was number one, Luke Welsh. Ivy is out of this game, so Luke Welch coming in at quarterback. And it looks like Spring Garden, for the most part, has gone with their second teamers. We do see Lambert coming back in, so a little mixture there, but mostly second team players, it looks like at this time for the Garden as we roll toward the two-minute mark. Lucky Bolin is in there at fullback. And they're going to draw Central Coos off sides, I believe. Yep, that'll be five easy yards against the Cougars, so it'll be second down and two after the penalty. We've chased Robinson after the game down the sidelines. He'll be catching up with, I believe, Central of Coosa coach Barry Simmons. What a great job he's done down there. At no playoffs for 16 years, 2000, the last year they made the playoffs and making it back into the 3A playoffs last year. A little confusion as Lambert ran into his fullback. Makes something out of nothing there. Nice gain out all the way out to the uh, Central Coosa 44, but a flag is down in the backfield, so this one may be coming back. Illegal motion against Spring Garden, as you see the call. I think we may have a Central of Coosa schedule. We'll take a look at that here in just a moment if we've got that. And talk about the Cougars. This will be the last time we see them. They played the first two games, and they'll get on the bus and head back over to Hanover, opening up with Montgomery Catholic, then another non-region game with Fayetteville. And then into region play with Platt, Prattville Christian, Beulah. Both teams, these teams will play Beulah. Another non-region game with Thorsby. Traditional 3A power, Pike County. On September 30th, that looks to be their toughest competition along with Montgomery Academy in region play. South side of Selma, a lot of great athletes. And then playing Childersburg. Kind of a neighborhood rival game between the Coosa County and Talladega County team to wind up the regular season. Here's the handoff to Welsh. Nowhere to go. He's tackled there by T.J. Hill. Getting it done on both sides of the line of scrimmage for the Cougars. So it'll be third down and six. But they do give him a couple of yards of forward progress. So third and six. We're down to a minute 15 and counting left in this game. And we appreciate Central Acusa coming up here all the way from Hanover down in, down below Sylacauga between Sylacauga and Rockford coming up here to Jackson State to play. And appreciate all these teams. We had teams from everywhere. We've had teams from Montgomery. We've had teams from the uh, Metro Huntsville area team from Tennessee coming here. And the handoff to Wesley Rogers. And he's got the first down. He picks up that six yards he needed out at the 45 yard line. So Spring Garden will maintain possession of the football with less than a minute to play. I got to mention Wesley Rogers there. Mickey, I know you know longtime former Munford coach Leon Stevens for many years. That is his grandson mm. playing at Spring Garden. I kidded him tonight. He had on SG stuff. I've never seen without Munford <laughs> stuff on, but he's going to hang around, he said, and uh, watch the mighty, mighty Munford lines a little bit later on. And gets the call again. 
And another nice gain on first down. They'll give him five yards before his forward progress is stopped right at the midfield stripe. 30 seconds and counting, so Spring Garden, they hurry up, can get another playoff, at least one more. I think both teams will be pleased with what's happened. It's been a very competitive game, 16-14 score. It looks like that's where we're going to finish. And Spring Garden's just glad it's not storming and they're not playing at 1030 at night like <laughs> they did last year when we had the rain delay. Took the field a lot earlier this year. A lot better weather conditions. And a nice hit behind the line of scrimmage that time for J.D. Stevens as he tackled the back for a big loss. And that'll bring us to the end of the game as Central Cusa overcomes some big holding penalties and they come back and pick up a touchdown here in this final five minute quarter to retake the lead at 16 14 and that will be our final score so central Cusa, john victorious in both their games 30 to 7 over southeastern they win this one 16 14 spring garden will now take on southeastern in our next game which will be coming your way about 10 minutes from now be a very enjoyable ride on this Monday night. Monday night football here at JSU <laughs> as uh, the Cougars will go back down to Coosa County with two victories here at JSU. All right, let's hear more about it from the Coosa angle. Here's Chase Robinson. Here with Coach uh, Barry Simmons. I know, Coach, wrapping up your spring tonight with a spring game, two uh, wins for you. Talk about tonight and, and your guys' performance. Well, I was pleased with our effort for the most part. I felt like we started sluggish the second game, but we came on toward the end. I was proud that the kids didn't give up, and that's something that we've preached over and over and over here for the last two years, trying to build our programs, never give up. And I was proud of them sticking around, sticking around. Uh, spring Garden's a good football team, and I knew it they would be. All right, They're a physical for football team. And that's what we're trying to get to is get be more physical. And uh, and tonight we found out we could play a little bit more physical. So I'm proud of them for that. But again, we got a long ways to go now to, after tonight. I can see that right now. Uh, talk about your spring. How's spring been going for y'all? Uh, spring's been good. It's been a very mild spring, so it's been nice for us, you know. Um, we've had good practice, good intensity of practices. Um, we got to learn a little bit more about commitment around here all right? and, 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 and everyday grind. And, and that's something we're learning. But, but we've got to learn that. But overall, we had a good spring. And, it's the first spring I believe they've had in a long, long time around here. And I was proud of the kids, the way they come out and competed every day. So um, to come out here and play in this venue and, and, and give them a reward, it was fun to do. And, and again, we had a real good spring. Well, uh, thank you, Coach, and good luck next season. All right, thank you. Number six, Seth. And there you see a uh, couple of coaches, players coming up. And nice to see uh, the players coming up and congratulating the coach. And, you can kind of tell from that interview, John, that coach is trying to instill a work ethic in this team and in this football program. And that is uh, that is obviously part of the program building. Also, what happened to him last year, getting back into the playoffs and getting it handed to him in the first round by T.R. Miller. That's the kind of stuff that creates a hunger when you go into the next season. And you just kind of just continue to build on those things and, and, you, and see improvement when you can. And Coach Simmons there indicating that this even having spring football practice something new, that they didn't even have that in the past there. So even having a spring game, and even though it's only 10 practices, that's 10 extra practices for young guys and an extra and a game atmosphere to be in. So I think a lot of positives for Central of Coosa. And now we get ready for Spring Garden to play again against Southeastern. And there you see Southeastern back on the field as they will loosen up again after uh, setting out the last game between Spring Garden and Central Coosa. Spring Garden will stay on the field, and we will stay right here as well. We're going to step aside for a brief timeout and continue with our live coverage of the Gridiron Challenge from a very scenic JSU stadium on the campus of Jacksonville State University.